Hello there, I'm Corel Painter Master Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'm going to show you some of the best practices for using the Spaced Out Brush Pack in Particle Shop. So I have an image loaded here inside of Photoshop. This is a photo of Seattle on the 4th of July. And this photo will work well because it's nighttime and there's a nice blank sky that I can use as my canvas. I'm going to go ahead and right click on the background layer and duplicate it. Then I'm going to load Particle Shop by going to Filter, Painter, Particle Shop. I'm going to launch Particle Shop. And then I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to find the spaced out brush pack. So these brushes kind of simulate space effects, different things that you'd see in the sky or things that you'd see if you looked through a telescope. So let's go ahead and start with Aurora and let's do a test stroke and let's see what we get. We get this really neat Aurora effect. It has about three or four different colors in it. And if we want to change that color variability, we can do that up here. We can add more color variability. So then we get a rainbow effect or we can add less so that we just get one single color. That color is determined by whatever we choose in the color picker. I'm going to go ahead and just pin the color picker here. We want to make sure that all of these brushes are set to glow and we could pick a different color if we wanted a green and we could even kind of layer this up. If we paint too much, we can always cancel out of that effect. Now how I would use this brush is I would add a little bit of color variability. And I would choose something like maybe this kind of brighter purple color here. Add some of that. And maybe a lime green might look kind of cool. These Aurora can be almost any color you want. If you want it to be smaller, you can make your brush smaller. I'm using the keyboard shortcut of holding Control and Alt and dragging my pen. You want to make it pretty small if you want a small Aurora. You can also utilize pen pressure if you have a Wacom tablet. If you press lighter, you're going to get a tapering effect. So let's go ahead and apply these. Let's go to save. And then we have two options. Do we want to merge the brush strokes or do we want to save only the brush strokes? And let's go ahead and save only brush strokes because then this will be non-destructive and it'll put the strokes on their own layer. And they look a little funky because we need to change the blend mode from normal to screen. We could also try some of the other blend modes, color dodge, or maybe hard light, or vivid light, linear light. It's really up to you. I think screen looks pretty good. And since they're on their own layer, you could even move them around, or you could transform them with free transform if you wanted to make them bigger, or if you wanted to squish them so they don't come down so far. You could also add a blur. You could go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, blur them just a little bit so they don't look so sharp because this is a night photo, so it's a little soft anyways. Let's take a look at some of the other spaced out effects. I'm going to open another image. And this is a space background that I created for one of my digital paintings. And let's go ahead and take a look at cluster. I'm going to switch my color to kind of an orangey color. And you can kind of take color cues from the color of the preview here, but you could also use any color you want. So cluster, if we tap and we hold, it's going to give us little clusters of galaxies or clusters of stars. But you just tap and hold and let it build up. That gives you some pretty cool effects. You can also just use these for stars if you wanted to. Let's take a look at Fireball. I'm going to shift that a little bit more towards orange-red. We get a Fireball effect. So when you tap, you're making the Fireball. And then when you drag and you release, you can kind of taper it off. So we can make some space debris. If you kind of do it really quick, you get that nice trailing line. Let's take a look at gaseous. This will give you kind of a nebula effect. So I'm going to pick maybe kind of a greenish color like this. I'm going to make my brush pretty big. I'm going to tap and hold. And it'll very slowly kind of build up, make my brush a little bit smaller. And I can just kind of paint. But you really want to just let it kind of build up. Because the longer you paint in one spot, the brighter it's going to get. You could also change your color and add in some other colors. Maybe we'll add in this pinkish purple color here. And just let it all blend together. I like this brush a lot. It's pretty cool. Maybe I'll add in a little bit of blue up here. And now we have this nice gaseous effect. We could also combine this with the cluster. Could add in some stars here if this is a nebula maybe there's some stars being born let's take a look at meteor 
Meteor is similar to Fireball, where we can tap, and we can create the Meteor, and then we can pull and create the trail, like that. So tap and let it build up, and then pull, and then release your pen to kind of taper off that stroke if you're using a Wacom tablet. Ease up on the pressure as you get towards the end of that tail. Again, you could combine these. I could also select that cluster brush, and I could add in some little dabs here so it looks like maybe stuff is breaking off of this meteor. Just add a little more character to it. Add some little trails here at the end. Or I could even build it up into a bigger shape like this. Next we have plasma. Let's use kind of a cyan color here for plasma. We'll make kind of a larger brush. Can tap and hold. Get this interesting random line effect. Space plasma. And you can kind of draw and doodle with it too if you want. Let's add in a little bit of purple. Now if you find that the details are too small on some of these brushes, let's say you want bigger lines here across your canvas, what you can do is you can go to save, save only the brush strokes, and then you can use control T to free transform that, or you can go to edit free transform, and then you can just make it bigger like so. And if I zoom out, I could scale that up even bigger if I want to. So then it covers more of the canvas. And then of course I could set the blend mode to screen so it blends in better. And I could go to filter, blur, and then maybe we could do radial blur. That might look kind of cool. Let's do a zoom blur. And then we get this interesting warped space effect. You can see there's these really cool trails now. It's kind of like a warp speed effect. For the next effect, I'm going to use this star painting that I created. I'll just duplicate that layer. And here inside of Particle Shop, I'm going to select Solar Arc. I'm going to use the Color Sampler tool to sample one of these orange colors. I'm going to go back to the Brush tool, and let's use the Solar Arc to create some really interesting solar arcs. Now I'm not going to go into the details of why this phenomenon occurs in nature, but the sun does have some magnetic anomalies that are called solar arcs, where material comes up from the sun and then goes back into it. So the way this brush works is the faster you move it, the more spread out the lines are going to be. The slower you move it, the more dense they're going to be. So you can see it ends up being more white if I'm slow. If I'm quick about it, it's more yellow. You can also tap and hold with it if you want to create some little explosions. Like so. Then we could go ahead and save this as just brush strokes. Change the blend mode to screen. And we could even add a mask if we wanted to. We could select the brush tool, select a soft edge brush, and we could mask out some of it if we wanted this to look like it's coming from behind the sun. Or we could just kind of fade it out a little bit, like so. The next effect that we'll look at is called Space Warp. I'm going to select kind of a violet color. I can just tap and hold, and this brush will kind of do its own thing and move on its own. I can also draw with it if I want to kind of lead it in a certain direction. It's a very interesting brush. I can kind of swirl it to make swirly patterns. I can do zigzags in different directions if I want to give it kind of a directional feel. And I can just layer it up. I can select multiple colors. If you want it to be a little more subtle, you can also reduce the opacity of that brush. Then it takes a little bit longer to build up you might be able to get more layers with it that way. Let's take a look at Spark Point. That gives you another kind of interesting nebula effect. You get a lot of grain. You can also tap and hold with it to get a little glowing blob thing. Or you can build it up. The way these glow brushes work is they're going to build up to white. So you want to make sure that you pick kind of a saturated color or a darker color. The darker the color, the slower it'll build up. The brighter the color, the faster it'll build up. So you can see if I select pink, it's just going to build up to white. And it's going to look more like frost rather than a nebula. So I want to pick something kind of on the darker side. The next brush we'll look at is called Star Field. And as you may have guessed, it can create a field of stars. So I'm going to select kind of a 
pale yellow orange color like this. Make my brush pretty big. I'm just going to tap and hold. And the diameter of your brush is going to control the amount of distance that your stars spray out from the center. So I can just kind of tap here and there and everywhere. Create some stars. Could select a lighter color, have some brighter stars. Maybe select a blue. And there's a little bit of variety in the colors because stars that are different distances from the Earth are slightly different colors. Some stars are different kinds of stars, so they're different colors for that reason too. Throw in a couple little red ones with just a couple of quick taps. And again, we can use the old familiar cluster brush to enhance some of those stars. We'll just tap really quick with a small brush to make them bigger and more prominent. So these might even be planets in the sky that stand out a little bit more. If your stars go down too far, they might not look like stars anymore. They might look more like airplanes or something. So you may want to erase some of them using the eraser. Probably would want to use a pretty big eraser. I'm using the right bracket key to make my brush bigger. And you could just erase them like that. If they erase too quickly, you could also reduce the opacity of the eraser. It'll take longer for them to disappear. That might give you a better result. You could also use a mask inside of Photoshop if you wanted to, to mask them out with a gradient. Next, let's take a look at Subatomica. This gives us kind of a subatomic moving particle effect. If we make our brush bigger, the particles are going to move further. It also makes kind of nice flowers, space flowers. Pick a few different colors here. And what's important to note about these different brush packs is they have suggestions. Like this is a space suggestion, but it doesn't mean that you only have to use it for space. I mean, you might want to paint flowers with this brush. You might find that some of the other brushes work well for other kinds of paintings as well. You could even use this brush to write your name or to do, you know, different effects and things. So they're really worth experimenting with. With an entirely different brush stroke, I can get an entirely different effect here. Like you can see, I almost get this nebula kind of pattern. Next, let's look at supernova. This is another kind of nebula. So we can kind of draw with this brush. It wriggles around kind of like a worm. We can make it bigger. We'll get bigger, broader lines. Really interesting brush. It gives you some really nice, random, organic patterns. But I'm just kind of scribbling around. Maybe I'll add another color, like this limey color. Add that in the center. And maybe a little bit of purple. And we couldn't leave out our old friend Cluster here. Let's select Cluster again. Let's add some clusters of stars. This is going to be a nebula. It's going to have some stars in it. Let's take a look at Tenacity. Let's use kind of a blue-green for this one. And we can kind of draw with this brush. It's going to flail around and do its own thing. And that gives you those nice random patterns. You might look at some of these brushes and go, why are these so hard to control? They're supposed to be that way so that the patterns you get are a lot less intentional. It would take you a really long time and a lot of concentration to be able to draw something this randomly. So I appreciate these brushes moving around and helping me a little bit in that regard. You're going to get better results if you're using a Wacom tablet rather than a mouse, of course. That's a pretty cool effect. Let's take a look at Wavicle. I don't know what a Wavicle is, but this is what it looks like. A wave particle, I guess. Particles are waves. Waves are particles. If you make your brush much bigger, you can get kind of a grainy pattern like this. If you wanted some cosmic background radiation, I really like space and astronomy, so these are really fun brushes for me to play around with. And last but not least, let's take a look at Wormhole. I'm going to select a purple color, make my brush kind of medium size, and I'll tap and drag, and I get this really interesting tube effect. If I'm really slow about it and gentle, it's a little easier to draw. Pretty interesting effect. You could also just tap and hold with it to create a single wormhole, and maybe swirl your brush around just a little bit from the center to make it look like it's a wormhole that's coming at you, and then really quickly start spiraling. So then it looks like you're going into the wormhole. Let's try that again. It's kind of a complicated maneuver. You tap and you hold and you let it build up, and you start to do tiny, tiny circles. 
then you spread out more and more. And then when the brush really starts going, then you just start going with it. You follow the momentum and you move outward in bigger spirals. And you could call you could also connect those two effects. I could start here and I could make my wormhole move over to this wormhole over here. So those are some best practices for the spaced out brush pack. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.